Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Very good evening to you all. Please uh, tell me if you can hear my voice. Give me a thumbs up so I can understand that yes, you can hear me. Wa alaikum assalam. I need your replies in chat. Can you hear me? Hello, 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 hello. Okay, some people are asking about giveaway. I'll just tell you that what is the giveaway thing. First, I need to, okay. Yes, voice is clear. Thank you so much. And here we go. Acha, in today's phonics class, obviously, uh, we will just uh, discuss about phonics and the giveaway thing. Giveaway is nothing but the PDF of all these things that I'm telling you, right? So you will get the PDF of all the things uh, from day one to day five. But uh, I think what what are the rules there? There will be some rules that uh, are not included in PDF, but I will share with you the video links to those rules so you can easily watch those rules because in phonics, we do not have uh, so many rules. Uh, they are just kind of uh, alternative spelling walls rule, okay? Uh, I'll see if I can add that too in PDF. Otherwise, PDF have all the things, lesson plan kind of thing, uh, blending activities, what, uh, the different terminologies that I taught you yesterday. So this will be included in PDF. And um, I'll see if I can provide you with some resources as well, but that's not sure because most of my resources are already on the website and they are totally free. So there are some things that are in my computer, but I am just not getting any time to upload them uh, to the website. So inshallah, if I get time, so you will get some more resources and they all are freebies. So I think this is a big giveaway to all of you. Uh, try to use those resources. Believe me, they are so useful because I myself use them for my classes. Okay. And the best thing is I'm allowing you to use it there. You will not be asked that. Why did you use them? Okay. Chalo, let's get it started then. Uh, it's our second day of phonics workshop, but in today's workshop, we will be talking about jolly phonics. Okay. So let's just, to recall, quickly go back to the previous lesson that why we are learning this, why we are learning jolly phonics. I just want to connect the previous lesson with this. So give me a moment. And here we are. By the way, thank you so much for joining. I can see many of you are here. Thanks a lot for taking out this time from your busy routine. So here we are. We are talking about jolly phonics. What, what is jolly phonics? It's a synthetic, systematic, multi-sensory method to teach phonics to kids. Yesterday, I told you about different types of phonics. So synthetic phonics is the best phonics in which we teach the sound of each and every phone, uh, grapheme to kids. Grapheme means letter sound or any letter combination that is making a sound. So this is synthetic. It means that you can build your words with the help of this phonics scheme. Children can build words with the help of this phonics scheme. It's systematic. What does it mean? I think I have this on the next slide. So let's go to the next slide. Here you are. So uh, since systematic means that it, it has a structure, the authors have given you a proper lesson plan from day one to the last day of your phonics course. So you don't need to just go into that. What should you teach? How will you teach? Each and everything is written in a systematic way and according to the science of reading. So children can easily grasp the idea. The things are very well written, very well mentioned, and the instructions to the teachers are so clear and sounds. Anybody, if even if you are a homeschooling mom, you can read the teacher's book and can understand what you have to do. But obviously, a teacher is uh, equal to thousands of books. So if you are getting the training from any teacher, it worth it. Okay. So be with me <laughs> in the session. Don't go away and just buy the book and start teaching. Inshallah, you will get so many ideas from me that are not written in the teacher's book as well. So it's a structured method to teach phonics synthesis means I have already told you that you can build 
words and sentences with the help of this phonics scheme you can teach children to do this and phonics we know that this is a sound letter correspondence we have already learned this yesterday so systematic synthetic phonics scheme and jolly phonics is one of them there are many other phonics schemes that are systematic and synthetic jolly phonics is one of them so why we are choosing jolly phonics Actually, let me just answer you this and then we'll move forward. Because Jolly Phonics is kind of like, you can say it's accessible. Best available option, accessible and proven. Why best available option? Because the other phonics scheme are too expensive for teachers to uh, get the training of them, right? Jolly Phonics is something that if you get the training from uh, your local trainer, so... Uh, it's up to them how much they cost, how much they charge. And if you take the training, someone from like someone from me, so I'm just offering this for free. But remember, I'm not an accredited Jolly trainer. It is that that I have been teaching Jolly Phonics since uh, such a long time. And now I know that how children respond with this phonics scheme. So I think that I can transfer this knowledge to you too. And you are here because you have seen my videos, my work. Okay? Accessible. The uh, books are available everywhere, anywhere, and it's proven it has shown results, right? So uh, what, if we are doing something, but we are not getting results, it's useless. But if there, you are doing something and you can see the results as well, so it means that this is something you can go for, okay? Now, let's talk about what is the meaning of uh, system. Like, for example, this is your knowledge. You have so many ideas. For example, this is the brain of parent. He or she has so many ideas that I will teach my child this, 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 that. But how to connect these dots? How to deliver this knowledge to your kiddo? For this, you need some guidance. For this, you need some uh, proper system. So Jolly Phonics help you connect all these dots in a proper way. And then you can teach. You have You get a graph and look at this. Now you have a path to follow. Okay? That's why training or phonics training is so important if you are a teacher or even a mother. And this is what, what we are doing here. We are learning how to teach kids. Multisensory approach. Some points about multisensory approach. Why do we teach in multisensory way or what is multisensory way? Uh, remember that children, you must have seen in your classes when you were a kid. Uh, and even if you are a teacher or a parent, you must have noticed that children are different type of learners. Some are auditory learners. They hear something and they get it. You just say one thing in front of them and they just repeat it like a, um, what do you say, tape recorder, as if they have just recorded everything. Some kids are visual learners. If they see something, they never forget. They just keep asking about the same thing or they just keep doing the same thing. This is a good quality it, most of the time, but it is also bad that they just never forget if they see something or auditory learner if they hear something. Some kids can be auditory learners, some can be visual learner, but this is a thing that we call kinesthetic learner and almost every kid is a kinesthetic learner. What does it mean? Kinesthetic learning means that children are using their hands or their muscles to learn something. Because according to Maria Montessori, if you know something about Montessori, it's at, uh, educational ma education method for earlier. So according to Maria Montessori, the brain of children lies in their hands, right? So if they do something, they always remember it. So senses, let's talk to about senses. We have five senses. We all know this very well. Sense of hearing, auditory sense, then visual sense. Gustatory is the sense of, sense of touch. I'm giving you these terminologies because I want you to learn the teacher's language. Okay? So gustatory is the uh, sense of taste. Then we have olfactory sen sense, sense of smell. And then we have tactile sense. In kinesthetic learning, in kinesthetic learner, we talk or we just uh, uh, give lessons and all these way in multisensory way. Sorry, let me just re uh, say it again. I just fumbled. fumbled. So in multisensory uh, method of teaching, we try to use all these senses of kids to help them understand what we are teaching, to help them 
uh, get the concepts that we are teaching. And it is not only related to phonics. If you have attended my grammar workshop, in my grammar workshop, I also told you some multisensory ways to teach English grammar to kids, right? And same goes with creative writing. In creative writing, you can also use multi-sensory ways to teach children because uh, listening and watching gets boring for them. They need to do something. They are full of energy. They are atom bombs. We need to release their energies in a positive way. So we need to give them a path, right? Uh, stereognostic sense. This is, uh, again, a Montessori term, right? In this sense, oh, muscular memory of children is involved. For example, this is the ability of identifying objects by touch only. If uh, you just blindfold a child and give him something and ask him, can you identify it? If he's identifying, it means that he's using his muscular memory. So this muscular memory is the best part in our childhood because this is the most radiant memory in children they can forget what they see they can forget what they hear but they don't forget easily what they felt or what they touch this is why uh, even newborn babies uh, stay calm in the lap of their mother because their muscles know that she is my mother and if you give a newborn to somebody else uh, or a kid who is just one or two months, if he starts crying, it means that his muscular memory is telling him that this person doesn't belong to me. So I am not in a, in some safe hands or I'm not at my place. Some kids don't sleep at different places. Like if they have a certain bed and you just try to make them sleep on another bed, they keep crying. Why? Because their muscular memory is telling them this is not my place. So this memory is this radiance. Why don't we use this in our classes, right? So from now on, we'll try to use the stereognostic sense or the muscular memory or the kinesthetic ways of teaching to kids. Let's talk about jolly phonics formally. In jolly phonics, we need to teach children five skills. They need to learn the letter sounds, learning letter formation, how to form the letter. If F is written like this, they should not write it like this. Or if N is written like this, they should not like write it like this. Okay, so we need to teach them the correct letter formation uh, along with the sense of writing in lines. Okay, next thing is blending the sounds. The most important thing because this is the, these are the first step towards reading or independent reading. Then identifying the sounds in words, it's called segmenting. For example, if I say a word dog, so they should identify that in dog, we have the, or and the three sounds are here. And the last thing that we need to teach kids are, um, is tricky words. We have five different lists, list of tricky words in jolly phonics. Otherwise in different phonics schemes, we have different types of uh, tricky word list. You can get this, uh, tricky word list for free from the Jolly Phonics website. I'll tell you that from where you can get some free material as well. And Jolly Phonics uh, by itself is providing you this. Some principle of the Jolly, uh, of Jolly Phonics, they are the same. We need to teach children letter sound if sad, sad is written and, and sand is written. So they should identify the difference and they should read uh, what is written. This is our duty again to help them write in uh, sound. Okay, these are the same things, but I have just made some other clear. Learn tricky words is here. The most important part is if you are giving books to kids, this is the most important part. That's why I'm just uh, stopping here. If you are giving books to kids to read, you can only give them books, a free choice of books. Let's, let's take it like this. Only progress to a free choice of books when blending is the automatic response. What does it mean? Automatic response means they see something. For example, they see the word pill and they look and say it. This is automatic. If I say a word, for example, if I give you a word like this, do you even try to spell it? You will see it and say that this is serve, right? If I write my name, you won't spell it. You'll see and say it that this is Hera. 
right? So the free choice of books or the uh, grade level books or the books that we usually have in our schools can only be given to kids when they have this automatic response, okay? Uh, otherwise, you will give them decodable readers. Now, what are decodable readers and from where you can get them? We will talk about this as well, okay? This is a next, uh, this topic will come later. Okay, that's it. Now we are going to our lesson plan thingy, right? These were some things that left yesterday. So I just connected that now we are learning about the Jolly Phonics lesson plan. Not any other phonics, Jolly Phonics. Here you go. The best part of this is each and every lesson is written in their teacher's book and that's really not expensive. Uh, if you get it from Amazon, especially in India, you can easily afford it. It's, I think within 500 or 700, something like this, the prices might be changed now, but it's worth buying it. You can just have it if you're a teacher and your life will be in peace. The simplest thing, the Jolly Phonics plan is one sound a day. For example, the child is entering the school, it's his day one, right? So on day one, you can start with a story of S, letter S, that sounds right. If you think, it's 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 an ideal situation, right? That the children are entering because Jolly Phonics begin with four, four to five. This is the age of uh, Jolly Phonics uh, kids. When, you, uh, when they are proposing you to begin it. So if a four-year child is coming to the school and he is ready to learn, so you can start teaching him the sounds from day one. If you think that they need some time to settle down, just give them some time and then start with whatever your first, whatever you want, so the letter S, okay? This is our first sound. So one sound a day, one sound a day. But if you see that, Children are not getting it. Maybe you are teaching some non-native speakers that are just not getting it. They are just not understanding the thing. Slow down. Okay, slow down your pace. You are the master of your class. You know how your children are responding. This is the ideal thing to give one sound a day. If it's not working, just go a bit slow. Make your kids settle down and then you can follow the same pattern. Okay. Now, what you will teach um, every day or what, uh, how you should begin the lesson. So let's go jump on to this one. For example, your kids are settled. Okay, now you are standing in your class and you are starting your lesson. You are teaching them. So here you go. Introduce the sound with a story. Here is our story. If you want, you can read this story from the book, but it's good that you just uh, memorize this story or make your own story. For example, if you are in a, uh, in some uh, part of uh, maybe India or Pakistan, where the names that are used in these stories or Bangladesh, like Sam is not a common name there. Susan is not a common name there. So you can change these names according to your kids. You can just try to come up with any story that you can relate with this picture, right? So it's not any hard and fast rule that you have to read the same story that is written in uh, the teacher's book. You can also make your own story, but be careful, keep it short, right? Because if they are non-native speaker, they will quickly lose their interest and act your story as well. For example, when I used to teach uh, Arab kids, um, so if I wanted to tell them that fell down, somebody fell down, or for example, the word is written here, he grabs hold of Susan. So I used to tell them that, look at this, how to do this. If your kids are non-native speaker, they don't know what is the meaning of grab hold. You are teaching them the story. So tell them he grabs hold of Susan and ran away. This with your body language is very important if you are a non-native uh, children teacher. 
if you are saying that he fell down you need to show what is the meaning of fell down okay if you are saying that sam skipped over it's written in the book is uh, in the story he skipped over so just take two steps skip over show them what is the meaning of skip over try to translate each and every word with your body movement if you want your children uh to understand what you are telling and we are not only teaching them sound if we are english teachers now so we are also giving them the whole english language how we can do this we cannot translate each and everything in their language but what we can do we can act according to maria montessori again the best teach uh, the best quality of a teacher is that she is a best actress if you are saying the word crying and your kids don't know what is the meaning of cry cry in front of them i am crying if you are saying i am sad make your face sad and tell them it's sad i am hurt so so things like this okay let's get back to the story part okay so for even for barking you can bark if you just make these funny things like susan is barking whoa, whoa, whoa. so they will be uh, you know engaged they will listen to you and then the most important thing your story should have this sound that is your that that is our main aim we are teaching what is our aim to teach them the sound so whatever story you are teaching keep this sound in this Now I'm reading this story to you just to show you voice modulation, and then I'll tell you the second step of our lesson. This is our first step. In first step, we read the we tell kids the story and do the action as well. Now I'm talking to kids, right? So you know, kids, today I'm here with a very nice story for you. Are you ready to? <laughs> are you ready to listen to it? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> again. Are you ready to listen to it? They will. they might say yes then go uh, go ahead on a lovely day you should have this picture as well at least somehow okay manage to get this on a lovely day say sam takes his dog susan for a walk susan starts barking woo woo woo, woo as she spots something is scary and spotty making a hissing sound like like this i'm making the sound right Sam skips over to see why Susan is barking, and there he finds a big, spotty snake hissing loudly. Terrified Sam, do the action for terrified. Show it from your face. Terrified Sam grabs hold of Susan and runs back to home. So this is how. with your voice and with your action you can't see my action because obviously the uh, video is banned but video is off but you need to do the action as well and you can also relate with the picture okay this is the first thing you have given the story you have given the sound now you need to tell them the action first tell them that did you hear the hissing sound in the story what was that that was right let me show you this as well that was So if I make a sound, everybody will move their hand with me. Let's do it together. S Say the sound. Move your hand with me. S right? Action can be like this or can be like this. Different teachers do it differently, but it should be like at least uh, the movement like this. Okay? Children will repeat the sound. They will uh, also do the action. this is just how you they do the action then you can tell them just a minute can you make this shape in the air help ask them to make an air tell them can you make on your boards or on your table they will make this move in on the board as well right or on their hand let's make or the sound on your hand this is how we are helping them to uh get this formation that how the hand is moving because they are very new to the school they haven't written anything at least you need to consider it maybe their parents were te teaching them but for us they are new now once you have uh helped them to move their hands in the proper way explain the formation and have them write it on paper the first step was a story theek hai the second step was the action the third step is formation 
So you can have a paper and ask them to write here. I'm showing it uh, with the dots because it's a video, but you are not going to give them the dots. Let them write anyway, but the shape should be proper, but this curve should be there. Okay. Don't give them dots. Let them write in the air. Once again, give them paper, give them some board, uh, whatever you have, anything uh, interesting, colored papers. If you have some laminated papers, it's very good. If you don't have boards, you can have some laminated papers and give them to write with marker, board markers. They love these things. So help them to write the sound, move to the next step, after this, we have blending, okay? But because this is the very first sound, so we cannot blend it with anything, right? So we will go for the activity pages. Now, uh, sounding pictures with activity pages here, I'm showing you some pictures, but you can have a proper worksheet, four proper worksheets on my website where you have this activity. You can show them some pictures, or give them a, a, a worksheet where they have to cross the picture in which they don't hear s, and they can circle or check the picture where they hear s. For example, you will tell them, kids, now I'm going to say some words. Please listen to the sound carefully and cross out the picture that doesn't have s sound, right? You need to be very careful. We are uh, finding sound. Sun, socks, slippers, moon, moon. Do you hear s in sun, socks, slippers, and moon? Emphasize on the first sound. This is how you will say it, moon. Some of them will get it. If they are gifted, they will cross it out. If somebody is not getting it, give them time, okay? We are here to help them, not to judge them. Repeat it once, twice, three times, and then help them to do this. This is just a, a single a, a picture cross activity, but in my uh, worksheets, you will find five, six pictures cross activity and the other things as well. I'll also show you those activities. This is how it is given in the Jolly Phonics pupil book. Okay, they have only these four pictures and from these four pictures, children need to cross the picture that it, that doesn't have the sound. Now, uh, you can make them do some fun activities, some fun ideas that I'm sharing with you for us and for other things as well. For each and every activity, because we do not have blending part today. We do not have dictation part today. Tree. So this is the very first day. So now it's time to you. Uh, give them something that they enjoy, they, that they can take back home and can tell their kid, uh, parents that we did this in the school. This activity is for letter P. It's a peacock. So it's simply a handprint and then some dots, p -p peacock, right? This activity is for all simple rice pasting. Uh, this is lady finger printing, right? Vegetable printing. So uh, after doing the lesson, you can make them do these activities. And this is very important. Do make them do these activities because they will wait for your class. And if you just keep uh, on asking them to read and write, they will hate English lessons. This is a simple activity. Look at how simple they are. It's a door. D -d it's the D activity, letter D. This is just a, a tissue paper that I have put here. And look at this, how simple it is, right? This can be the activity of long and short O. O, 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 O. Two O's are here, but this is goggle. It's goggles. Er, this is some wool for H. Again, this is hand printing. I colored this part of my hand. Just a minute. I colored this part of my hand and pasted it here. Okay. Then again, I put some more color, turn it like this and pasted it here to make the body of horse. So this is H and horse as well. Two minutes, five minutes and the activity is done. Children are happy. Next is some tissue paper. And these activities I uh, do in my online classes. Okay. Uh, 
I used to do now. I just uh, moved on to something else. But yes, we can do these activities as well. So you can have a chick like this. This is just a tissue paper ball, a small tissue paper ball. And there you go. Then you can paint it. Right. This is B, uh, tea powder, straws, caterpillar. You can make caterpillar by bottle cap printing, cotton pasting. You can make boats for them for O, the long O sound, B, oat, oat, right? You can also give them some bunny here, uh, bunny ears uh, for a hopping uh, for H for hopping. So you can use this in uh, H for hopping and you can also use this for something else. And even in games, I, when I'll tell you the games, blending ga games, you can also use this. Next, we have uh, lentil pasting. Simple. Just get some gram lentil pasted. Any lentil. Everything is in our kitchen. We can do so many things with our kitchen stuff. Noodles. Make them paste noodles. This is an egg, okay? Just a, a border and circle here. Then this is the kicking card, tissue paper pasting. What else I have now? And this is something else. Oh, collage. It's a simple collage tur turtle. Another S with a snake. You can make these cute octopus and they also move now this is this is flattened like this okay when i made this and i open it and if you press them so they move forward okay you can also make them with tissue rolls but uh, tissue paper toilet tissue rolls but uh, how, it's difficult to arrange them all the time so just use simple paper roll them cut the legs uh, if this is something that will take time in on online classes, you can ask parents. Otherwise, you can uh, cut the legs already and ask children just to paste this side and make the face and their octopus is ready. And when I made this um, in my, uh, I uh, made children make these octopus. I had a black giant one and they had little finger size uh, orange color. And then we took a picture. It's so beautiful. I don't know if it's on my Instagram or not, but it was so beautiful looked so beautiful so this is h salt pasting you can also color this salt a small teeny weeny letter uh -uh, letter a big letter because i have to i just keep doing these things so i try to save the material as well this is ch ch chain okay church -ch a chick church -ch a chain anything you can do and then we also have judge a jellyfish this jellyfish where, where's the face Okay, so you can make it a little better than this because it was in the box. It's like this. You can also make train, but again, this is a little lengthy thing. You can ask parents if you are an online teacher to make this. And it's it. this can be the activity of long A. Then kids can write the words here, tail, main, train, and they can uh, blend the sounds as well. Okay, so these are a few activities. And you can just search Pinterest. You can just uh, check some other websites or YouTube. You will find thousands of words. They are, are so simple and can be easily done. So these are some activities for artwork. Uh, something is at the back, but that, those are blending activities. The picture that I showed you, that was uh, for blending activity is the gap here okay just a minute please sorry for the noise all right so this is done these were some fun activities that you can do with your kids after you have given them the lesson and they are so important believe me they will start loving you they will start waiting for your class Teak. Now, let me have a look at your chat. Chalo. Inshallah, just be here. I will give you many ideas for blending as well. Thank you for commenting. And the next thing is, okay, so this was uh, day one. See, now we are proceeding. There's some other activities, some other things are. You can sing the Jolly Phonics jingle. For example, for S, 
Snake is in the grass. Snake is in the grass. Snake is in the grass. So uh, every sound has a jingle. You can easily get them on YouTube. Take draw some pictures of what's having the sound. You can just do this on board or ask kids to draw something that has sound. Do some art and craft like making a collage or painting a snake. Yeah, this I have already showed you. Make shape with dough or modeling clay. Uh, this is not only uh, the fun activity, but it is given to kids to help them uh, strengthen their hand muscles, right? So you can also use play dough or clay in your class to help them make the uh, things and they will help them in other ways too now day two lesson plan it will go the same you will begin with story story and the sound lies in it okay excuse me pardon me there is something very important that i've missed before you start day two lesson okay you need to show them the card of day one and ask them, do you remember which sound is this? And they should say this is, if they have forgotten, so obviously you are showing it, you are saying it, they will recall it. And with their friends, they can also recall it. So revision is from now on. Uh, in, uh, in the first lesson, the first part of your lesson was a story. But from second day, the first thing in your lesson is revision. Always begin with revision. Okay. So we have revised the previous one. That is, give the story of a. Tell them how what is the action for a. Right. Moving on to the formation. Explain the formation. Here is the formation of a. You need to write it in air, and they will write it uh, on their boards or the papers, whatever you have given them. TK. You can also show them how to write this in lines on the board. Okay. Next, we will go for blending. Encourage children to say the A sound because uh, at, uh, according to the book, we are not, we, are, we don't blend or A, A at this stage. But what I do, I started right from here. I don't wait for the third sound. When we are done with an A, let me show you how I do blending. I start blending. Because from the very first day, they should have the concept. Just a minute. I'm just taking out the cards and I'll come back to you. Blending and segmenting should never be left for some other time. As you. Okay. This is the card of. Can you see it? And the card of A. Now. Let's do it. A say first. You uh, they know that this is they know that this is a right. Now, after telling them the formation of a, they have done the worksheet of a. Tell them that let's try to read these two sounds together. Or let's try to say these two sounds together. A sa sa sa. They don't know what is blending, right? You will model it to them. You will tell that this is blending and how to do this. Ah, sad. Okay. So uh, from the very first classes, you need to tell them that what is blending and model it to them. This is done. Now we have the third sound that is to. Same thing will go. You will get a uh, day three lesson plan. I'm not going to give the lesson plan for all the days. I'm just uh, going towards blending part. Now they know the three sound. First, you will do the revision. Please write down these points. Revision, tell the story. In the story, you should have the sound. Then you will go for, excuse me, uh, formation. And uh, uh, at last, after formation, we will have the activity paper and then the blending time. Here you go. Uh, when it's come to tea, we can blend some proper word. At, at, and s at, sat. These three words can be blended. Now, how to do this? Just quickly see it here with the help of cards. And then I'll show you the activities as well. That what are the activities that you can do? For example, this is s. This is a. Read together. Sa. 
and look at this where is the card of tea just a minute please i'm sorry i should have taken it out earlier Okay, it's here. These are the three cards that we have got. Check this out. Begin with two letters blending. S -a -s -a. T -a -t -a. A -t -a -t. Go on either side. T -a -t -a and A -t -a -t both. This is not that you are giving them any test or dictation, you are modeling it, okay? Whole class lesson, at, at. You will be standing in front and then you will be saying it. Now let's try to do this. S -a -t. Try to pull the sound of A so they can uh, join it quickly with T, the sound of letter T. Sometimes what happens that children say the first two sounds and they forget the last sound. It happens when you are talk, uh, working with many letters. And another uh, thing that happens that whatever are the first two sounds, even if the last sound is, for example, the last sound is P, they say it sat, 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 because till they reach to the third sound, they forget that what is the third sound. They can say it sap. But when they read sa, they don't say pa. They say sat. So these are some things that really happen with kids because they still they reach here, they forget it. So to solve this problem, this is just a hint, uh, clue that ask them to pull the sound of the vowel. Sa what this will do when you pull the sound. They will get some time to look at the letter once again and then try to produce the right sound. Okay. Otherwise, whatever is coming in their mouth and T usually comes very easily in the mouth. So they uh, say the last sound as t -t 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 very easily. Okay. Let's talk about some blending activity. Then I'll again tell you the steps of... Uh, uh, the lesson but in a flow or let's 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 wind up it let's uh, listen to the steps of lesson in a flow wrap up this then i'll show you the blending activities day four lesson will go same like this day five lesson same Achha, now now let's let, there is something different in day five in day five you can start giving them some words for uh, blending and as well as for uh writing segmenting activity what you can do don't give them a lot of words just two words ask them i uh, tell them that i'm going to tell you a word try to sound it out on your finger i again need to show you this is how we sound out okay try to sound out the words on your finger and tell me what are the sounds in this word the word is tap tap can you tell me the first sound in tap Tap, tap, t, t, t. This is t. Listen to this word carefully. Tap, tap. Which sound do you hear after t? Tap. It's at, at, tap, 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 tap. What is the last sound? It's p. So you can fing uh, do this finger segmenting with them. You can also do t -ap tap like this just to give them the phonemic awareness that these are three sounds and how you are breaking them. If we don't work on these skills at this position, at this point, they will struggle in further blending and segmenting. So may it be oral, may it be written. If they can write, Ask them to write to Apple. I'll show you some activities how to make them write as well. But this is how you need to do. Sound it out. Write it down. If you f find that the ch children are getting overwhelmed in writing, it's difficult for them. You write it. Let them follow you. Do not just expect that they will start writing from the very first day. See? So this is just the group one as A-T-I-P-N. 
day six and let's wrap up let's wrap up this so this is our uh, lesson plan in short you need to revise the sounds first of all okay then introduce the new sound with the action and the story show the formation of the word do blending do sounding out and you also have the activity after blending you also have the activity papers i'm sure that most of you would know the activity papers of my website otherwise i'll be sh uh, sharing with you uh, i'll be sharing them with you soon then you go for dictation or segmenting so this is segmenting that i to uh, just showed you and if they can write it as well so this is awesome okay if they cannot write the write it don't force them help them to do this once they feel confident once they feel comfortable they will start doing it right now it's time to show you some activities that help kids in blending and they are also called the uh, you can also take them as phonemic awareness activities just a minute let me get the things here All right, let's begin with this monster. You might have seen this monster in some of my videos. You can just make this anyway. This is a red label box, right? So I just cut it, draw something here. The hair uh, is gone. Pull the tongue of the monster and ask children to say the sound. S -a -t. Let's say it together. Sat, sat. Then t, e, p. Say it together. Tap. And then you can keep pulling and keep. Many of kids can do blending easily. But if your children uh, of any age, if they are struggling in blending now, don't go for three-letter blending. Make them good at two-letter blending only. For example, s -a, don't give the next letter. S -a, s -a. Where is the next? T -a, t -a. P -a -p -a. make them confident in blending the first two sounds when they can look and say the first two sound pa, they can go for the next one pat right so this is again an important important point to notice that if children are not blending automatically they are struggling with blending give them two letter blending first please write down this as well or let me show you this card as well before we move forward when I start doing something, I just get another idea that I have to tell you something else. Blending techniques. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about this. First of all, start with CV pattern. C for consonant and V for, <laughs> look at my spelling. Can anybody read it? C for consonant, A and T and V for vowel. Okay. So give them blend, uh, as a, then with all the vowels make them good at here then you can also give them vc pattern at at apple app don't give the third letter if they are good here it will uh, get so easy for them to go for cvc they already know as said they are champ in this then google give another sound to make it sad then set tan ten Things like this. CVC means consonant, vowel, consonant. Next step of blending is CCVC. Consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant. For example, you have a blend here. S -k -a -k -a -p, clap. T -r -t -r -a -m, tram. B -l -b -a -k, block. Right? So next you can go for a CCVC. And after this, you can go for CVCC. CV means consonant vowel, s, a, s, a, n, d, sand, b, a, b, l, t, belt, j, a, j, m, p, jump, right? If you find that your kids are struggling and reading these two sounds separately, k, l, k, l, so you can give them the consonant blends idea as well. But if you just go with this, most of the kids get it. I, I don't teach my children uh, consonant blends explicitly because if they are blending, uh, if they're good at blending these three things now, 
this is also easy for them. Just make their base strong in blending CVC words. The rest of the thing will be easier. If it's not getting easier, then go for something else. Then go for some other solution. You can make the cards of consonant bread like hill, bill, sell, till, uh, pill. And then you can show them that if they are together, say kill, say bill, say tear, and then read the other word. Tear, am, tram, kill, app, clap, bill, awk, block, like this, right? Take a screenshot because this is the pattern of blending, how you need to proceed further. Blending letters, you can find this thing on my website. It is available. You can copy this, down, uh, uh, download it for your kids, or you can also make this and make them practice for blending. Short vowels, long vowels, both uh, these cards are there for all the sounds, right? Then we have blending games and in blending games, yes. Now is the right time to show you the activities. Give me a moment. Let me get the activities for you. Okay, blending games can be just anything. Now look at this. This is a box of oil, right? So I just kept it to make an aquarium. Now, how if children are not uh, interested in blending or they find it difficult, so you need to uh, uh, go for the GBL approach. GBL, game-based learning. Now they don't want to blend. Tell them that, come on, let's play a game. Uh, you need to select a fish and I'll fish the fish for you or you can fish a fish for yourself. And then it has a secret message that you will read. Okay, so they will certainly get interested. Now look at this, what I'm doing. This is a box. I'm just putting my hand in. Oh, I need to go from this side. This is just a piece of felt. I'm taking out a fish. Okay, the fish has something written on it and it's a secret message just for you because the child had selected the red color. Okay, he wants a red fish. So now you will show this to child. Can you read the secret message and show it like this? Read the sound, p. read the sound, a. together, pa. Read the sound, t. together, pad. Say it quickly, pad, right? So this is how you can, if you are homeschooling, so this is best, only one child will be there or you can play this in small groups. Children enjoy playing such activities in with their peers, right? So you can go for a yellow fish, a blue fish or whatsoever. You should have some fish inside written different words, CVC words on them. Another thing can be, now it will be a mess here, but let me show you this. Okay, let's talk about some envelopes just a minute please okay these are again some secret messages children have a lot of curiosity they break their toys not because they are uh, indisciplined not because they are not good kids this is curiosity curiosity that is asking them to see what is inside the toy. They break their things to see what is inside. It's not that they don't value for things or they don't care for this. For us, things matter for them. Curiosity matters. So take a, uh, just use this curiosity in the best possible way. Now look at this. The secret message is here. B, E. Eh. Is it a? Eh? Oh, it's E, the long E sound now. B, E, N, Bean. Okay. So you can give uh, some, you can keep some envelopes like this in your class. And one day, uh, once a week, you can ask children, go and select your envelopes. Uh, you keep different colors or same color and then they can play with each other they can ask them show me your what is written in your what is written in my so this will be a game for them and also blending practice okay what else let me get the things from back this i will tell you this is the segmenting part just a minute please
All right. Actually, the things are on the other table, so I need to go and fetch them. Okay. So uh, I I don't have kids. That's why I use these toys. Otherwise, you will make headbands for kids with uh, the CVC words or whatever words, even if they are long words, even if you are uh, doing multisyllabic words, but you want to give them as a game. So write the words on headbands. Children will wear these headbands and then they will go to their peers and read each other. For example, dog will read what is written here is hug, hug and this is the author dot. So they both are friends and they will read each other headband. Uh, another better way of doing this, you can print some name list or if your kids are uh, uh, new to a school, so you can have uh, their pictures uh, as a name list, right? Just get the PDF of their photos and whenever you are doing any activity like this, so you need to stick, uh, not a stick, just print their picture. For example, what I'm trying to say that there is a marker. Let me tell you to get the best result, right? So you will have pictures here and words written and blanks here. So for example, this is a picture of Ali, right? So uh, every child will have this list. Uh, one of the child will go to Ali, read Ali's headband and write what is written on his headband. Then he will go to Ahmed and read Ahmed's head, uh, headband and write it here. Then he will go to the next child. So all kids will interact with each other. Your class will be a happy class, but you need to maintain the discipline. Tell them that if you will make noise, the game is finished. So they will listen to you. Classroom management. I'm not teaching you that here. How to manage these things, we'll have some other sessions for this. But these activities are really awesome. If you can manage the class nicely, children love these things. Acha, now another thing. You can give them hand bands as well or bracelet. It's very difficult for us even that to sit down and then open the notebook and read or write something, right? So why don't have a bracelet? Look at this. Okay, on the bracelet, uh, write some words. This is simple paper and I glued it. And then if they are sitting, tell them quickly revise the words that are written on your bracelet. So it's fancy, it's appealing to them and you are also doing your work that you are asking them to read the words so they can read it. You can have as many uh, handbands as possible or what do you say, bracelets as possible different color different things so uh, they appeal kids and there you go okay so the monkey is going from here now oh, go back go back and you also Achha, next thing just a minute and I, I need to go back again Okay, I'm back. Check this out now. Kids who don't like to write. There are many, there are many kids who just don't like to write. But we need to make them write, right? So <laughs> what you can do, you can have some colored uh, salt or sand or whatever. If not colored salt, sand, take simple salt, right? Take simple sand and then give them a letter for example i have kept the cards inside for example letter n you are giving the formation of letter n hold it somehow here okay this this is not obviously for our kids otherwise i would have uh, kept a proper tray where i can keep the cup but it's still working n is here tell them how to write n go down come up and round mm. And I have done these things in my online classes because I have got kids like this who were just not willing to write, who were just not willing to blend or do something. So these activities really motivate kids. Okay. Likewise, you can just give them any letter uh, kept at the top. They can do it. And you can also go for blending like this. Ask if he doesn't want to write uh, in pencil or with a pen. So tell him to write sat here 
a t set. It's even fun for us if we do it, so we also enjoy it. Uh, don't give them paper and pencil. Your aim, your goal, your target is to make them aware of these sounds to form words and then sentences. So just do it in any way that is appealing to your child. Okay, we just don't need to force them to write with pencil and uh, why they don't like to write uh, in pencil or they don't want to use paper or pen because they are not confident in this. They think that this is difficult and I can't do this. So prepare them, give them the confidence that look at this, you are writing here. Once they get it that, okay, I can do it. Then they will never be scared and they will never show a uh, throw tantrums that I don't want to write it. Okay. So try to find out, figure out the ways that your kids, that your students like uh, to encourage them for writing. Okay. After this, we have another activity. What time is it? Half an hour remaining. Okay. You can have some uh, words written like this. And then you, Acha, this is this is a uh, dice for connectors. When I teach creative writing, so I made this dice for connector. Uh, you can easily make it as origami. I can provide you with the template and you can just cut and paste. What you can do on this dice, you can write the short and long vowels, whatever you want. For example, we you write a, 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 a or R, the five short vowels. We have six side. On one, you can just make a question mark or write you choose, right? The child has to throw the dice. For example, O is here, O. So he will write K, O in the middle. And then T. Then tell him, can you read it? K, O, T, hot. Okay. So now the next child, this can be a group game. This can be between you and the child. And then the next kid can just roll the dice. For example, he got A, so P, at pad then uh, whatever so this can be your uh, short wall dice long wall dice or whatever sound you want to give them in the middle okay so this is one of the blending and writing activity as well what else i have to show you yeah, there are some more things let me get them Okay, I'm back. Here you are. You can have these uh, movable alphabet, right? Uh, they are available on Amazon and if you can check them out in your local market. So you can even ask children to uh, make words with them. Instead of writing, tell them, can you make the word jug? Let's sound out jug. J, a, uh, g jug and there you go they can write it as well with the help of movable letters they are movable right uh, you can also do this with cards what i do because uh, i don't ask any every uh, one to buy this every parent to buy this so i simply ask parents to make some cards on some cereal box and then uh, whatever i asked the child to write he just put the cards in the right way and he makes the word. Take. So instead of writing, we are giving them some activity, but that is still writing. Asha, you can also get these puppets, finger puppets. They are Jolly Phonics resources and they are free on their website to read something. For example, if you want to, uh, if you want kids to blend words, for example, this is a word and they are just not interested in blending and tell them that the ink will help you. It is Inky. It's a character of Jolly Phonics. And now she will help you. K otter caught. P atter pat. Something like this. Okay. Then the other cards, uh, Caterpillar, Snake Bugs, they all are free. Resource of Jolly Phonics. I'll share with you the details that from where you can get it. Now, what else? Okay, let's do this.
you can have a hanger. Can you see the hanger? Okay. And you can have some cards. I just kept my cards. Now it's uh, up to your setting where you are. Okay. So if you can do this activity, why not? For example, you have a clothesline or something like this. And you ask your children, can you make the word fed on this, uh, on your uh, on the clothesline? So the hanger must be hanging somewhere. Is it bag or clothesman? I'm not sure that it will hang or not. Yes, it's hanging. Just a minute, please. Okay. So like eh, the second sound is eh. Then this. At least with these activities, what will happen? They want to learn. They want to do this. Or if they do want to learn, at least they want to do the activities. But ultimately, they will be learning it. Learning these things. Okay. So now it's on your settings. If you can arrange this thing, so they also look so good. If you uh, can make some t-shirts just cut with paper and ask them that you need to hang the t-shirts instead of these cards they can also hang t-shirts on the cloth line or socks any fun idea anything that is good to them okay i think now i'll be sitting and showing you some other activities on computer but before that, the last activity that is on board, let me show you that one as well. Pardon for the delay, actually, the boot is so big. Sorry for keeping you waiting, actually. It's getting a little difficult to fetch these things. But here you go. I hope you are enjoying the session. If yes, so please give a thumbs up so I can understand that it's really useful okay now look at this we are uh, this is kind of phonemic awareness activity you can't see what i have written at the top phonemic awareness activities i will just give you some uh, more example of phonemic awareness activities as well that was blending but this is how to identify the sounds if kids are struggling in identifying the sounds so for example this is the train of mm. tell them we are only going to put words in the bogies that have the mm sound Let's read the word mat, mat, mat. Do you have m here? Yes. Bring it here. Paste it here. Ten, ten. Do you hear m here? No. Met, met. Do you hear m here? Met. Yes. So bring it up. Put it down. Okay. Now they are just falling down. Similarly, you just say the words. You can <laughs> look at this. You can do this with the first sound. Uh, can they identify the first phoneme? You can also do it with the last sound. We are finding out the n sound in the words, but the, it should be at the end. So the first word is ten. Is ten? This is ten. This is. We don't have any other word with n. So you can also go for the last sound. You can also go for the middle sound. We need to find out the. Um, we need to fill this train with the words in which we have. Oh, so in ten, ten, t, eh, n, do you hear oh no pot 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 do you hear oh yes bring it here mop and some other words you can just fill this thing right so it could be a small group lesson you can make it on a small a small board and even if you are giving the whole class lesson so this can work Okay, give me a minute so I can just put it back.
All right, I'm back. Some other activities can be sorting. Like uh, you have a fly sorter, right? Uh, like you can just uh, hit the flies with that. I have just made this for my videos, but now I don't use it. So you can have some words written on the board. I'm not going back to the board. It was so difficult to handle that. For example, this is the board and you have some words written. You will call two kids and tell them, can you, or you can even make them in the shape of flies, okay? The uh, Instead of making them simply, you can make some flies and write in the uh, tummy of the fly, mm, add or whatsoever. Then can you sort the fly a ah, or letter a ah, or mm. so two kids will compete whoever will uh, hit the right thing will win you can play this as teams you can play this as individual kids whatsoever you can also have some bottle caps with sounds written on them and children can make the words with those as well take care this is also something that kids like to do uh another phonemic awareness activity is kept here it's so dangerous let me show you this is some water in a glass bowl right what you need to do you can have a paper underneath i don't have a paper underneath i'm just keeping these cards okay now this is ink in the water right i don't know if you can see it and then uh uh transparent glass you can have a drinking water glass i have taken a small bowl now look at this if i just bring it here can you see that mm, is visible otherwise it was not visible if i show you like this you can see the water the inky water but if i put the glass over here you can find out mm. so you can give this activity to kids as well they will love doing it for sure they will find out the sounds and then you can just give them their, your conditions that I will give you this, but you need to be doing this thing. They will understand it. Okay, we have some rules. Rules are very important in classroom management. So you need to give them rules. Okay, if everybody is coming here and, uh, and want to do this activity, tell them if you will do this, we won't be able to do uh, this activity. Let's have turns. Let's uh, come here one by one or two by two. So everybody can do the activity. See, Converse, we will have, a, inshallah, a session on this. It is called the Calm Therapy or Calm Script. I recently learned this thing, C-A-L-M, Calm Script. So for every type of behavior, right? We have a calm uh, script. So how to respond. This is for teachers that how to respond for uh, disturbing behaviors in class. Inshallah, if I get some time, let's pray. Allah Ta'ala, that Allah Ta'ala give me this much strength that I make a complete uh, presentation on that as well. And I'll uh, tell you this is something really amazing that I found out. So Inshallah, I'll give you that as well. How to manage your class properly. Okay, oh, that will be helpful there. Achha, let's do one more thing. It is segmenting exercise. And look at this. I need some. Okay. This is called orthographic mapping. Okay, this is something. Uh, that is not purely the concept of jolly phonics, but it's very useful. In orthographic mapping, what we need to do, we say, uh, for example, this is a segmenting or dictation practice. Uh, let's don't do this uh, again. Dictation, dictation is a hard word. Now it's a harsh word because uh, what happens that mothers keep telling you have a dictation tomorrow, you have a dictation tomorrow, prepare for it. That's why children think that dictation is a bad thing. Let's say, let's play the game. Let's do the mapping. Let's do the graphing of words, okay? So how, how you need to proceed, you will say a word. For example, you are saying the word ship. Child will have this, child will have a marker and uh, eraser as well. So let's uh, uh, finger tap the word ship. Finger tap, sh, e, p, sh, e, p, ship. Let's put the dots here or you can, to make it multi-sensory, what you can do, 
you can have these counters with you and then ask child let's uh, map it this is the mapping part can you see the circles this is sh a ship ultimately we need to uh, we are going towards riding right but before that we are just making him calm finger tap the word sh a p ship map it sh a p ship now can you write the sounds here what is the sh, sh how do we spell sh it is sh 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 a a a sh p, 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 ship there you go okay and then let's blend it sh a p, ship say it quickly ship uh, write it with the uh, write the word in the lines sh a and this work really well with new learners or with struggling learners rather than giving them dictation uh, again this is uh, did you notice that this is multi sensory technique we are first finger tapping we are uh, using our muscles then we are mapping visual and again tactile sense then we are writing direct practice and we are blending direct practice of reading and then we are again writing the word so if you give if you facilitate your kids at the early stages like this don't you think that it will help them in later stages it will surely i don't know what do you think but i know that it will surely help kids and this is helping kids okay let me put it back what's left there are so many ideas you know that some things are left but the time is not allowing me to do so but i want to share the last thing the last thing inshallah I, after this i'll just uh do the oh, what's the next part of the now look at this it's a vowel monster okay once you have taught kids vowels you need to have a proper class have some activities in which you can uh talk about vowel sounds you can have some finger puppets like this everybody can have finger puppets and uh with different shape this is something very simple you can just cut the hair some other way and then a a a o a a a a o a a a a o a are short vowels that we use right a template of orthographic mapping is there uh, on the 42 sounds of phonics uh, 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 page on my website orthographic mapping ka the i'll show you the website for this thing theek hai so sing the song familiarize them with the sounds of a a a o a and then you can also make this activity look at this i cannot bring my face up but look at this i just blow the air in and my monster is here so this is my short vowel monster a a a o a a a a o a a a a o a are short vowels that we use want to see once again Okay, I want to do it once again. Look at this, and here you are. Okay, I have taken a, a straw, a paper cup, poked it in. Okay, the straw is in here. This is a thin glove, and I have secured the glove with a pony. The straw is outside. Check this out. Okay, the straw is outside, and this is the thin glove. And here I have written the short vowels. You can also write the long vowels. You can also make the vowel hand. Just trace their hand uh, on a card sheet, and then write a a a a and make a, a monster face in the middle or whatever in the middle. And then, because we need artworks, these artworks will help them recall these things. ठीक है? So I hope that this is done. Okay, inshallah today we will have the giveaway. So please uh, give the comment, uh, leave your comments, and also like the video if you have forgotten. Because I know that you uh, uh, like the video, but I want to see this in the form of likes as well. Acha. Now let me just recall what is our next thing to do. Acha. Today I got it. I got it. I need to show you some of my students doing these things and saying the. Vowel sounds. For let's first of all see that. 
because yesterday some of the uh, uh, I got some messages for the short sound of sound of short wall. Yeah, it looks that I have been speaking for so long. So <laughs> let me share with you how kids say these sounds. Just a minute. Just a minute, please. Here I am. This is my sweetheart, Sabrina. And she has recorded this video on my request. Look at her mouth movement and listen to the uh, sounds of vowels, how she is pronouncing it, pronouncing them. Short vowels. Ah. Eh. Eh. Hold on. Listen to the sound of letter I, please. And she is a native speaker, right? Uh, it's not a. It's not a. Even when you blend it, when you say the word, you say a. But when you teach kids, or when we teach kids, we say it a. Uh, I'm sorry. I I think I said it twice. A a s. Listen, to Sabrina. It's better. A a like uh, this. Oh. Uh. Long vowels. A. E. I. Ow. O. She was saying the Oy. sound. Oi. You. I think it's done right the only thing i want to show you that how these walls really sound once again the short walls then we will leave ah. thank you sabrina for this f if ah. Ah. and i will send this in the group as well if you want to uh, practice with her i'll send it to you the next thing that i want to show you is the uh, just a minute. Video of another cutie pie. <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> Hello, Miss Hera. Okay. I was thinking to call some kids uh, in the class, but it would have been so time taking. Otherwise, I would have called some of them to show you blending and segmenting, but time is not allowing us. Now, this is Isa. Thank you so much, Isa. Hello, Look at this device that her his mother has made it. Right. He's doing this with uh, his mother, right? He's a new not new student, but he has just started these things. And mashallah, so good at this, right? So you can also create such devices. I'll share the link of this as well. If as a parent, you are involved now, nothing can keep your child from learning, right? And now let's see our slides. Only six minutes are left. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, I wanted to talk about pencil holding as well. Let's see. Art and craft. We are done with art and craft part. Finish. Okay. We have some time. So let's talk about pencil holding. Pencil holding is, again, a very important skill that we need, need to ch teach children. Because if uh, the posture is wrong from the very posture and the holding of pencil is wrong at the beginning, so it gets really tricky to correct it later. Some easy activities that you can do. There are many activities that we can do for this, but let's see if we get any time. Maybe the last day of the session we get some time. So keep your questions ready. The last day I'll be taking the questions. Uh, so if you want me to do anything again, and let's look at this. Okay, let's just put it aside. So uh, to help kids hold the pencil nicely, what you can do, you can give them a proper tripod grip. 
you we get some uh, tripod grips from uh, market as well but if you don't want to get those it's very simple to make at home have the play doh right stick it around your pencil at the right position and then hold it tightly now look at this you have made a tripod grip for your child and now he can hold it he he can just find where is the right place to hold and then can write properly if he is not holding the pencil with these two fingers look at this we need the alligator grip right the first finger on the top this finger will here to rest and uh, the thumb will be holding it in these two finger we hold the pencil the middle finger is here to have and the rest of the fingers should be at the back if they are coming like this if they cannot control their hand because again the hands are not uh, well coordinated or the muscles are not as strong so you can give them a what do you say cotton piece you can give them a coin you can give them a bottle cap to hold with the back fingers tell them hold the, this thing with your back fingers at first it will be difficult for them because their hands are not specialized for these movements they are baby hands but if you keep telling them how to do this and even the pegging activities in Montessori we have many activities for uh, that indirectly prepare kids for peg, uh, pencil holding these two fingers back this is how we hold the object open close you can pack the basket. This is the activity that, that you can even do with your two-year child, 2.5. I have uh, a niece and she is just in love with playing with these marbles and uh, putting the packs on others' skin. <laughs> she, she just loves to put it, uh, try to hold the skin and put it here. So kind she's tortured living, <laughs> loving, sorry. So you can uh, give them this and other thing that can help you that can help your kids to hold the pencil properly or oh, smelting the clay play-doh is melting let me just get this and tell give them this uh any pony that this is a little bigger okay we need a little shorter pon uh, pony for them look at this what i'm doing this is my hand i'm going inside coming up now the pencil will not move anywhere. The pencil will be stable here. They cannot just uh, uh, throw it. It will not move by itself. And then they can write it like this. Okay? Write, it, uh, write with it like this. So, so many other activities are also here for pencil holding. For a strong grip as well. If we get some time in the next class, I'll give you those activities. Because they're, these things are never ending. If you are a teacher and you are a little creative, you can just come up with your ideas as well. Okay? Chalo, what else? Let's go to our slides. And see, oops. Sorry. So, I think this is finished, right? Now, the last thing is that I have to share with you uh, the worksheets for these lesson plan. I'll quickly try to revise the lesson plan, but just a minute, let's do it. And you can also start posting your questions. Today, I didn't uh, ask for uh, anything. So if you are here and you cannot comment, please message now to Ms. Farin. Ms. Farin, please uh, do the draw as well. Ms. Farin is there. She will be writing your name and... Uh, doing that thing right the giveaway thing Acha, from where you can get the resources if you don't have the books uh, jolly phonics book go to google type here homeschooling with hera it's here enter you will get the website here homeschooling with hera click here if you subscribe to the email list, what happened? I'm just working on this. You will also get the push notification feature here. Then I will just remove this. My web developer is working on this. Write your email here and subscribe. So whenever I upload any new resource here that I keep on doing, so you will get an email that a new resource has been uploaded to the website. Go and check that out.
this is only for this i don't i will not send you any newsletter i will not bug you i will just not ask you to do this and that or buy something only the resources that i will upload uh, on my website you will get a uh, notification for this okay okay so this is my website here you need to go here worksheets can you see this worksheets okay click here and phonics worksheets for 42 sounds click here mm -hmm. it's bugging me as well I, I don't want to have this inshallah it will be removed soon now these are the phonics uh worksheets for all the 42 sounds if you click on this i said i have just uploaded uh, updated them a little if you click on this worksheet you will have this paper but it's not showing up here what I have actually, you can go to this button first. Let's see how to download it. Click it and you will download the worksheet. Many people ask me that how to download. I just don't understand that. What is the problem? Uh, Rupali, if you cannot comment, comment to Miss Farheen. I have sent this in the message. Please don't message me directly. I cannot uh, entertain your messages. So please, this is the download button. Download the worksheets. And yes, you need to do them one by one. When you will download, you will get a QR code on the uh, worksheet as well. If you scan the QR code, you will land on the video of this lesson. I have created the video lessons for all these um most of these, I'm going in a sequence. Some of the video lessons are not completed yet, but most of them are done. So you can just make your kids watch the video lesson. They are only for kids, not for adults. Okay? Not for adults. You can watch with, uh, with them with your kids. The, uh, I meant to say that children can watch those lessons themselves. Here is the orthographic map. Click on the orthographic map. This is for CBC word, three letter words, right? So you can download it and keep it in a transparent uh, sheet. I don't know what do we call those envelopes. If you click on this, this is for longer words. Look at this. Okay, so you can, according to your child's level, you can get any of them. And just a minute, let me show you one more thing that how you can... Uh, make use of them these plastic uh, file bags no? they are easily available on stationaries so buy these and do this and even when uh, isa's mother uh, isa and hamdan they uh, their mother what she has done for all my worksheets the kit that you just saw uh, for all the worksheets from to uh, the last uh, thing that we did she create, uh, made a file and every worksheet she kept in these bags. Why? Because, mashallah, they are twins. So two kids are doing the same thing. So uh, instead of uh, making them do the work on paper, she just made them do the work like this on uh, like with board marker. So she saved her ink. She saved the earth because, <laughs> yes, recycling and paper sa uh, saving is something that we all need to do. Okay, so this is all I will share. The last thing that I'm going to share with you, then I will take your questions if there are any. From my side, this will be the last thing of today's session. You can also have uh, this blending activity. Tick. You can have some color-coded activities. I'll upload this on um, website as well. It has then been uploaded on the website. So please subscribe the website. Whenever I upload it, you will get it. This is for short vowels, and this one is with the long vowels. Okay, children need to find out that this is a, this is d, so aid. This is the word. Okay, and then we'll discuss the decodable readers tomorrow, inshallah. Right. The last thing I just say the last thing, but I don't end it. The last thing. This is the last thing for short, please. Lesson plan once again, one sound a day, okay, but keep revising. How you will uh, do the lesson? First, you will give the revision, right? Then you will give a story plus action. Take this is everyday lesson plan. Then you will give formation of the word, formation of the letter, sorry. Then you will give blending. Then you will give segmenting. 
or dictation, oral segmenting, written segmenting, whatever you want, right? Uh, and you can have the activity achha, after blending, sorry. After blending, if you want, you can also go for the activity paper that I have just shown you. Okay, number five could be your activity paper. So they get a break, activity, segmenting. And then you can also make them do some art and craft. Art and craft or any fun activity you can manage in between. You can tell that one day we'll do or the other day, something like this. But this is your everyday lesson plan. This will be your everyday lesson plan. Whatever sound you are doing, wherever, uh, whatever is the, whatever is the what, nothing. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to take your questions. So please, let me just have a look. And Ms. Farin. Please do the uh, draw as well. So we'll announce the uh, winners. Actually, this is this is the playlist that I was talking about. Look at this phonics lesson one, phonics lesson two. They yeah. these lesson. Uh, please do two giveaway one because we couldn't do uh, it yesterday. So only two uh, giveaway one for today, one for yesterday, and here you are. Okay, till or it's the 24th sound that uh, I have completed. There are 42 sounds, so I'm just trying to do them side by side. You can uh, play these uh, play these videos <laughs> for your kids and they can do the work with me. Okay, I'll share the link as well in the uh, group. All right. Now let me have a look at your questions if you have anything. Uh, if you have any questions, please try to write them again so I can quickly see them. It was thank you. Yeah. Because uh, I'm trying to go to the and if you haven't liked the video, please like like it. Where is like button? Are they like button is the thumbs up is the like button. I have tried this activity air tracing. Okay, super. So thank you. And in tomorrow's uh, class, we will start inshallah what? Alternative spellings. Okay. Alternative spellings of vowels. And also the three levels of jolly phonics. That what do we teach in each level? Uh, okay. 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 There are, aren't many questions. Ms. Varin, if you can just uh, quickly tell me. The names of people so great yeah, vacuum and blending is useful. Yes, blending is used for reading. Blending is the basic uh, step for reading. Extremely simple. Hello, segmenting is you and segmenting yeah. is used for writing. If I'm not working, please tell me, ma'am. Yeah, you are not wrong. Asia, it is right. Uh, the first name that Miss Farheen has given me is what? Oh, she has given Lata, Sundara, Sunda, Sundaram, and Yogi, Yogita Singhal. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Farheen. Lata, Sun, Sundaram, and Yogita Singhal. Please send me your email IDs uh, directly or send them to Ms. Farheen. And inshallah, after the workshop, even after a week after the workshop, I will send the things to you, right? Because every time I give the workshop, I try to change the notes a little. So I'll just do the amendments and we'll send you. And for this, I need some time. The workshop is finished. If you want to leave, please. All activities are simple and attractive. This workshop will be uh, available to you for only 24 hours. So please watch it within the given time. The session is, thank you so much, kinesthetic learners. Where we get Jolly Phonics story, lovely plan. You will get Jolly Phonics stories uh, in the in the proper teacher's book. If you want to see the teacher's book, it's here. This is Jolly Phonics teacher's book, right? In a single book, you have all the levels because we need to teach uh, all the three levels in one year. Okay, so this is the Jolly Phonics teacher's book and you can see the lesson plans, how they are written. 
uh, for example, let's go to the first one. Let me show you. This is the story, okay? This is how, uh, that you need to show the flashcard, revision part, a story, a story is written here, then action, formation, blending. After blending, you have sounding. Sounding is like finger tapping or sound out the words. Word bank is given for teachers uh, that if they want to make them more practice or if they want to uh, give them more words to dictation, then dictation is here. And then we have further ideas that I have already given you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much as I make meaningless words also. My daughter is stage one. She knows some sounds. The school has not taught properly. Achha. Shall I start from the beginning? Yes, it's good to start from the beginning. If they have not taught them properly, start from the beginning. Give them a freedom to blend. Yes, give them the freedom to blend. Uh, what do you call nonsense words as well? Nonsense words or what do we call uh, alien words? For example, if I give you the word g, er, oi, k, where is the cursor? So now this is not a word, but they have to, uh, they should know how to blend it. Okay. Okay, it's been to start from the beginning. Every detail given has really excellent. so nicely. Wow. Can you teach alphabetical order? I need to start from letters only. Go with the letters. Uh, it's, it is what that, the uh, what do you say? Educationist or the people who are working on these skills, who are working on science of reading and writing, who are working uh, on the brain of kids. They have suggested that go with the sound system first. Right. And then you can also follow the alphabetical order. But start with uh, at, uh, if uh, it's suggested if your school is not allowing you and they are asking you to go for um, alphabetical order, no worries, then go for that. OK, so can catch you. This is Canva. I made the slides on Canva. The monster activity. Thank you. Wow, amazing, man. Yes, ma'am, you are activity papers. Thank you so much. Super awesome. Thank you so much. Any questions? Any different A sound and one, it is only letter A. How to teach the differentiate the sounds only A sound? I, I, I don't get this journey of preschooler. I don't get your question. What is it? What you are asking? Let me go to this screen. So how to teach the differentiate the sounds only a sound when it is only letter A. Please rewrite your question. I'm not getting it. Which one is better? CV or VC? Both, both, both. Go with both thing. Uh, side by side. Uh, ask them to blend at 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 and then t at t both of them. CV CV uh, we see they should be good at both of this. But CV if you go for CV, so uh, many words are here that we uh, make with CV. So you can begin with this, but also give them the sense to blend with we see. You are so patient. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. Kids won't feel like going home. And then so many enjoy. Thank you so much. Um, any questions? Some kids are unable to differentiate between sets, sets, sets. Uh, if they are unable to differentiate between S A T and S E T, uh, make them practice. Make them practice and show them the mirror. Solar energy, I'm uh, giving the answer of your question. Uh, whenever you say these sounds, I showed you Sabrina, right? When she's saying sa, ah, the mouth shape is different. And when she's, uh, she was saying set, eh, eh, so the mouth shape is different. So you can give your kids a mirror to see that, first tell them that how will 
how should be your mouth shape uh, when you are saying ah it should be drop down how should be your shape of mouth when you are saying ah it should be stretched like this right so if you teach them this and then tell them to go and see in mirror also uh notice it shouldn't be something like this that you are saying these words incorrectly sometimes it happens that we are not pronouncing the words correctly sometimes my kids correct me you said sad you didn't say set right so we need to be careful about this as well uh, if we are pronouncing the words and then we can do we get it online this is also super yes yeah, so i'll upload it on the website inshallah you have a pre-primary school who i i don't have a pre-primary school okay they are uh, share the template of dice i'll share inshallah wooden packs are there in market yes uh it's kind of to share such lovely thank you so much yes enjoying a lot super bracelet activity thank you so much awesome idea ink water idea thank you so much crystal clear ma'am thank you i myself enjoy this one thank you so much inky too you are thank you so much more than thank you so much i have done this my daughter and she loved it thank you thank you are the sheets sheets are not laminated how can, they are just pdf you can download them and then you can laminate them if you want don't laminate uh, don't go for lamination just keep them in a plastic uh the, you will get i don't know what do we actually call it actually i have forgotten we use this in montessori but now i have forgotten the exact word for these uh transparent sheets amazing free giveaway in path okay giveaway has been done i'll send you the names again so interesting and believe that it's work yes yeah, they do work they do work i'm a firm believer of this okay so um, thank you so much that's all I guess I uh, are the worksheets. Yeah, all the worksheets are freebies. Uh, on my website, you will have the shop uh, portion. Only that portion is paid where I have the my spelling rules uh, book and some cards that I kept uh, for selling, <laughs> but nobody purchased them. But <laughs> worksheets are freebies. <laughs> Go and enjoy. Thank you so much. Okay, increase kindly make a video to increase concentration of little students. If you do this GBL approach, who is this? Yogita. Yogita, if you uh follow the GBL approach, now G what happened to this? G B L. Why they don't focus? Because there are many things that are uh, calling them. But did you notice that if they play a video game or if they are playing with their kids, do they go here and there? They are always intacted. They are always con uh, they always concentrate on what they are doing. So if you make your lessons uh, just like a game, your children will not go anywhere. They will focus, right? So if you follow these methods, some other methods, there are so many th things. Just think uh, from yourself, and you will get so many ideas. Your children will go nowhere. I'll send the wall girl saying, Masha, that she's Sabrina. I'll send Sabrina's video in the group. I cannot send, obviously, uh, on YouTube, but I'll send it to the group. Okay, thank you. Okay, 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 okay. What do we call to this plastic bag? I don't know. You just go uh, to our... Uh, if somebody knows, what do we call these plastic sheets that I have just shown you, plastic bags? Please uh write it down well done thank you so much i think when we should teach vows to kids uh, Hima, himanshi we have a proper sequence of jolly phonics and uh when we reach to the third group the vowels are finished the short vowels um pre-writing activities kitty catty thank you so much kitty cat uh, kitty cat edits uh right on my webs uh youtube channel pre-writing activities or writing activities for kid and after write uh, homeschooling with Hera. And after that, write homeschooling with Hera. You will get some pre-writing activities. I have uploaded those videos, but they are so old, three years back. So nobody watches them too as well. It was a great time. Thank you so much. Is ink a blend? 
NK and NG, they both sound similar. It's these two are nasal sound. For example, if I say thank, thank, sorry, thank and thing. So NK and NG goes in your nose, <laughs> goes in your nose, go in your nose. And they uh, sound like we don't pronounce k so uh, hard and neither. Girl, yeah, they, these are, what do you say? I'll just check it. Should we call it blend or digraph? I think that it should be a digraph kind of thing because I'll I'll just look into this. I'm sorry. I'm not giving the answer to this. I don't want to misguide you. So I'll just look into it that what it is properly called. Precious, thank you so much. When you want to start teaching phonics, should we start with uppercase? Lowercase letters, lowercase letters. Please start with lowercase letter because this is the language of books. In books, we have most mostly lowercase letters. So our aim is to teach children reading and writing, not the uppercase letter. They won't help us much. When we want to start teaching phonics, should we start? Oh. I have given the answer. Uh, can you start phonics before the age of four, like 2.5? Yeah, sure. Why not? Start it uh, as early as possible, but don't uh, force them for this. Okay. Especially for writing. But the proper age for writing is four years. So if even the kids who go to Montessori, they do different activities, but they are not introduced to writing until the age of four. So... When we start to teach phonics, should we start uppercase, lowercase, lowercase? I have to, uh, told you, thank you so much for writing this again and again. Ma'am, give us more activities on, on alternatives. Topic here, Nina, we haven't done alternatives today. So, inshallah, tomorrow's session will be uh, about alternative yeah. spellings of vowels. And that's it. When we start to teach phonics, thank you so much. I think this is yeah. enough. My question is when we should teach vowels to kids. I have given Himanshi the uh, answer of this. And I think this is all. This is all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Junior KG, senior KG, I don't know. Four to five is the age for Jolly Phonics. So, <laughs> finish. Now it's finished. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, that's all for today's lesson. I hope I'll see you tomorrow again. Allah